welcome, friends, to another edition of Tiffin Box TV. I'm your host, Seishu, and I'm speaking with Molly Marie, who's a, a boudoir photographer based out of Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Now, I don't know anything about boudoir, and I said, Molly, you got to come on my show so we can talk a little bit about what you do, why you do this, and definitely, you know, being in Wisconsin, you know, you're thinking, you know, it's it's a beautiful state, uh, but cosmopolitan is not the word that would come to mind my, my mind when <laughs> when I think of Wisconsin. I think of uh, other things like you know lakes and you know uh, natural landscapes and things like that. So I'm interesting to see that you've actually made a name for yourself for the last eight years. You've been uh, a boudoir photographer uh, in Eau Claire, and I wanted to know. Uh, First of all, welcome to the show. <laughs> Hi, thank you for having me. It's good to I, finally I, chat with you. I know, I know. We've been we've been playing this uh, Facebook tag as, as as you would to try and get you on board. I know you're busy, very busy, uh, and uh, wonderfully busy even in, in the winter time. You know, which is uh, probably probably the best time to be uh, you know a boudoir photographer. I'm assuming there's that, wedding season and then there's like boudoir, boudoir season. season. Gotcha. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> um, Tell me about. I'm gonna just ask you why. Why was it so important for you to photograph on a boudoir? Yeah. Um, so you were right. I've been in business for eight years. But what I didn't tell you is that I actually didn't start out as a boudoir photographer. Um, I started out actually doing weddings. I was in college, and to be honest, I I loved photography, but. I needed money to pay my, you know, school bills sure. and I knew weddings was like where it was at. At least, you know, that's what I thought. I was like if you need money and you're a photographer, you do weddings. That's what I thought. So, I did weddings and um I did enjoy them, but one day um one of my brides asked me if I would photograph her in her underwear in a hotel room and I was like Sure. <laughs> um yeah, I mean, I was super nervous to do it, but it turned out being really awesome and just the moment that I saw her face when she saw her pictures, like I knew her beforehand at her engagement session. She was always a little bit, you know, self-conscious. And so um, seeing her reaction to the photos and seeing her boost of confidence, that was the moment when I knew that I had to do that for a living. Because not only, you know, did I enjoy it, but I yeah. felt like it was making an impact on women around me. So. Absolutely. Uh, in your mission statement, you say, Confidence, self-acceptance, and personality is what I bring out in the women I photograph. Uh, <laughs> yep. Right? Um, and all of these are obviously very important, but why are they important for you? Yeah, um, so I find that a lot of women um, always have struggled with self-image in some kind of way, shape, or form. Like, we're always trying to, like, lose more weight or have better skin or blah, blah, blah. Like it's never just, oh, I'm 100% in love with myself. Like there's always something. Um, you know, on one side of the, you know, perspective, that's good because you do always usually want to be striving for something in your life. But, but really, you know, you should be happy with where you are right now. And so it's important for me because, you know, I don't want women to feel like they can only do a shoot when they reach that goal weight or they reach that, um, I don't know, certain weightlifting goal or whatever it is that they do. Um, I want to show them, you know, wherever it is right now, whatever your insecurities are, like come into my studio, I will take care of everything. And I promise that when you see your pictures, you'll realize that, you know, even if you want to lose however much weight, like for health reasons, I promise that it won't be like, reasons of how you look like you're gonna love the way that you look in the pictures, and you're gonna feel really, really great. So that's, that's where the mission statement came from. <laughs> oh, excellent! Uh, and and as far as as far as your your clients, there are they all in Wisconsin? Do you fly out to photograph them uh, across the country? What is what is your ratio of, uh, you know, in Wisconsin clients versus outside of Wisconsin? Yeah, that's a good question. So one of the things that I didn't love about weddings was actually traveling. Uh -huh. um, I didn't love that I was like gone on the weekends, but then during the week, you know, because I wasn't just weddings, I did portraits too. So like I'd be gone during the weekends and then I would do portraits during the week. So I pretty much never had a day off. Um, so when I switched to being full-time boudoir photographer, one of the things I told myself was that I would never like travel for a session. Like I will take sessions if I happen to be somewhere like speaking or even sometimes I mean I know this is bad but if I'm on like vacation I'll just say hey I'm in this place and you know I might just take one shoot or two shoots but 
the majority of my shoots take place at my studio in Eau Claire, and I've had people um, travel, you know, super far to get a shoot with me. I had someone flying from Tennessee, um, so I oh. mean, um, and the majority of them, I would say, I mean, I do get a good deal from Eau Claire, um, but I do also get a lot of clients from like the middle of nowhere. So, like the cities that are around Eau Claire that maybe have like a population of. 100 people like I get a lot of women that are like farmers wives and stuff like that wow, okay. <laughs> yeah at the end of the day <laughs> the images you create um are they for the women or are they for their partners their spouses their friends that's a really really good question um so from a marketing standpoint I feel like women women need a reason to do the shoot. Cause I've actually had some of my clients say to me, you know, I'm glad I can be this because if it wasn't for this certain thing, um, I wouldn't have been able to justify it just for myself. Like, and I even had someone go so far as to say like her friend would have judged her if she just did it for herself. Like it almost makes her feel like selfish or something, which is weird to me. Um, but so from a marketing standpoint, I do think it's important to say like, it's for, you know, your husband or, you know, for confidence or something else other than like just for you. Cause mm -hmm. at least in my, you know, experience, my clients have trouble dealing with that. Um, but in the end it's 120% for her. If that, I hope that makes sense. <laughs> it does. But, uh, I have to ask you though, when, when it comes to even marketing, uh, even if you say, listen, this could be this uh, special gift for your boyfriend or, you know, partner or husband or whoever, mm -hmm. uh, and, and uh, you're still you're still trying to get her to accept the idea of being vulnerable and being photographed by you. I mean, they don't know you other than maybe some of the images you've you've chosen to share online, uh, and they always probably wonder like, oh, wow, could I do this? Could I could I be that person? And you have to, I guess bring them across this bridge and say, hey, yes, you can be that person and mm -hmm. it's it's actually going to make you feel good. Um, that's a pretty big responsibility, yeah? Yeah, it's a big barrier to entry, if you will. Sure. Um, I feel like with weddings, it's kind of like you get engaged, you plan a wedding, and you need someone to document that wedding, so you hire a wedding photographer. Boudoir isn't something you just wake up and say, I photo these today. Right. <laughs> um, it's not really like part of a traditional timeline of your life. Um, so you, as a boudoir photographer, you know how powerful it is. You know why you do boudoir photography. Like if it was up to you, you would make it part of you know a lifetime timeline. Um, but since it's not, you have to use your marketing to do so. So let's. I'm very curious about how the switch takes place in a in a woman's yeah. mind. You know, a woman who says, uh, "It's for me. This is what I want to do." What is it that's going to convince her to make that switch? That goes, mm -hmm. "No, no, no. This is this is too much. I can't do this." To yo yo, I am worth it. I'm going to do this, and I'm going to be. I'm going to feel fabulous, right? Yeah. Right. What is that switch in her mind? And is that something that you are actually, in a way, uh, you know, controlling or affecting in, in some way? This is my favorite question I've ever been asked, I think, in like any interview. I love that question. Um, okay, so for every woman, it's going to be different because some women are single, some women have a husband, some women have a girlfriend, like whatever their scenario is, right. it's going to be different. Um, so what I try to do is I figure out who my ideal client is um, or I'm like for me, it's kind of broad. Um, so I will just do different like marketing from different standpoints. So I think for a bride, um, the switch for her to go from not wanting to do boudoir to doing boudoir is to show her the end result, um, how her husband will be excited about it. Mm -hmm. um, so, and like in the end, even if she ends up loving it and it is, you know, maybe for her, cause like a lot of my clients will say, well, you know, I came in for him, but it ends up, you know, maybe it was more for me, but um, you know, you do have to have that switch click at some point. So I think for a bride, it's kind of going from 
um, okay, well, I could get him, like, an engraved flask on our wedding day. I mean, what kind of a reaction is that going to get? Ooh, I like booze. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but, you know, if you can show her, like, his reaction might be tears. I've seen it happen. I mean, his reaction might be, oh, honey, you're so beautiful. I mean, who doesn't want to hear that? Um, so what I've done in the past is I have recorded, like, had some of my clients record, you know, gifting um, the album to their hubby and like seeing his reaction or just having sharing someone's story like someone might call me up and be like oh my gosh like after I gave him the photos this happened you know and I might share that story on my blog so um, I think that's one way that you can do it okay okay um, there's been in the last eight years uh, definitely a, a wave of boudoir photographers now you know yeah uh, there's several in my town in fact um, what is it that you think uh, has contributed to that that wave, that sort of Ooh. increase of <laughs> boudoir photographers? I mean, clearly it's not easy, uh, and it's mostly women who are photographing women. I'm, I, I'm, mm-hmm. I, I imagine. I don't know if any guys were. Well, I know a couple of guys who are actually photographing boudoir, but um, and I could ask you questions about that too. Uh, yeah. But uh, <laughs> you know, there's been this wave. What what is what do you think has contributed to that wave of boudoir photography in in the industry? Why is it so popular yeah. now? That's a really good question. So I do know that boudoir has been around since the eighties. Now it could have been around before then, but I was born in eighty seven, so I'm not going to talk to that. <laughs> but um, I do know that it's been around since the eighties. You know, I have some photographers in my area that still have pictures up from the 80s on their website so um oh wow but i do agree with you that i think it might be more popular now um and it could have something to do with you know the more years we live on you know i think the more accepting we become of certain things so it could be that um i'm not particularly sure but i think the other thing is um now i have a blog where i share things with photographers and I actually did a recent poll with them which I found really interesting and I thought that the majority of people reading my blog maybe were new photographers um, but turns out they actually have been in business for a while they are just new to boudoir huh. um, yeah so some so, of them are making a switch to boudoir yeah or adding it oh adding um, it. okay yeah so for instance like wedding photographers are busy in the summer but mm-hmm. they're looking for something to supplement in the winter right. um and i think that there are enough boudoir photographers out there now that have had success with it um and when we all you know band together and share that i mean when they see that why wouldn't they want to add that service for extra income and or um you know maybe they've experienced a boudoir shoot just like a lot of wedding photographers become wedding photographers after they've had a wedding. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. So like boudoir is like maybe they had a shoot and they knew how it felt and they wanted to share that with other women. It's not like a typical portrait session. I really feel like there's a really big sense of empowerment and it's a lot different. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of different reasons, but that would be my guess. And I actually did um, check Google Trends to see like how much boudoir had been googled and things um and it's been going like this i mean the big spikes are for valentine's day (laughs) so that's that's um, coming up pretty soon right yep even cnn has like um sometimes posts about boudoir and things like that excellent (laughs) excellent um there's been a move to boudoir and i've as i hinted already there's uh, most of the photographers happen to be women Mm -hmm. Uh, i uh, you know, right? Yeah. Uh, um, the, 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 I don't think there's a there's a great push of w- men photographing uh, women in that in that there same manner. There actually surprisingly is. Is and that I, right? I guess I wow. shouldn't say surprisingly, but I mean, I think I've always known about it just because I've been okay. in boudoir. But like, I could see how someone else could be surprised about it. There's a lot of male boudoir photographers. Um, I haven't necessarily like pulled my audience on that, but I should. Um, but I recently interviewed Brian Caparici, and he does boudoir. And the reason I interviewed him, other than the fact that he's pretty awesome um, and that he has a Canadian accent, no, <laughs> is that um, a lot of my like um, readers on my group were males asking me questions like, how do you do this as a male? How do you do this as a male? And I'm like, 
I'm not male, so I'm not sure. Um, Go ask so, a male. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think it's a definitely growing um, thing. So it's interesting. Excellent, excellent. Um, it's wonderful to speak to you as a uh, as an expert, first of all, in boudoir because this is all you do. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> and and you have a website that caters to photographers who are eager to learn about boudoir photography, and that's what's the name of the site? It's called Booty Shorts. <laughs> yep, it's bootyshorts.com, and I have to spell it because it's booty like boudoir, so it's b o u d i e shorts.com, like <laughs> short pants. <laughs> what, can, what can one expect on this website called Booty Shorts? Oh, unicorns and magical things. Oh, uh, um, perfect. That's exactly <laughs> what people want. <laughs> chocolate waterfalls. Um, no, so what I do is I just share things that have worked for me in my business. Um, so a lo- it's a lot of marketing tips I found. I really, really love marketing. Um, yeah, if I love anything as much as photography, it has to be marketing. So I share... Um, you know, we just did a post on how to have a successful open house. Um, if you have a studio or if you don't, doesn't matter. Oh, wow. Um, okay. I do get clients from trade shows. So I share a lot of my experiences and how you can do those two in your business. Okay. Excellent. Uh, people can go to bootyshorts.com. I'll have a link down below. Uh, sign up for you you're giving away something called 10 best selling boudoir poses. I mean, it's, you know, again, it's one of those things that, People are probably aching to learn about and probably are f- frustrated, probably, right? You know, not being able to get to the right pose or making people feel comfortable. And all of this, and, it, and one of the things you also cover is how to interact with your clients. It's perfect. I should I should sign up for this, although I yeah. have no interest in putting off posing talk. is a lot more difficult, I think, than other posing because you have to flatter the client. And yeah, so I think peop- I, I decided to make that because people didn't, not only do they want to learn about posing, but right. you want to learn what's going to act. What are your clients actually going to buy? Excellent. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much, Molly. I appreciate the the time. Um, I know time is short for you, and you, you're running off to another meeting, possibly. Or uh, regardless, I mean, this is a great time for us to connect. Um, I look forward to seeing you back online on on Facebook, and we'll talk soon. Take care. Yes, thank you so much. Take care. Bye. Mm-hmm.